Um, one of my favorite places is the island of Banda in the Banda Sea. And it's beautiful because the water is everything a water lover dreams of in terms of crystal clear and full of life. And because it is very, very volcanic. And you constantly got steam coming from this volcano. And it is richly jungled with green jungle. And you've also got old European colonial architecture. Mm. Because that was the source of nutmeg, the gold of the spice trade. And they became very wealthy on it there, the people who worked in it there. And now it is like a uh, disintegrating dream. So it's very good. It's, it's, it's um, the place where uh, people were also hunting uh, pythons to sell to uh, Chinese, is that correct? That would have been another island, that's right. Sulawesi, that okay. is Sulawesi Island. That is where the boogie seafarers come from. Yeah. And it's also very beautiful. But as you say, it is home to the world's largest pythons. Now people think that the anaconda is the largest snake. It's heavier, but it's shorter, and it's a sleepy old cow compared to a python from Celebes Island, so, which are over 10 meters long. The champions are over 10 meters wow. long. Wow, reticulated python. Reticulated right? python, and yeah. they do on a regular basis eat people. Oh, wow. Have you seen one? Yeah, I filmed them. Yeah, yeah. What's the craziest or um, most uh, unusual animal encounter that you've had? Well, I suppose one of the best was filming for some other people called Wild Things. It was a show on America. I've done a lot of other filming with other people for other shows. We were trying to film the mermaids, which are the Asian dugong or manatee, and they're believed to be the origin of the mermaid myth, which, as you know, mermaids would drown sailors. They would be so attractive, they would be drawn into the sea. And the thing is, we were filming also in Sulawesi, up in Celebes Island, and they wouldn't come close enough. It was a full moon, so we were about 10, 15 meters deep, no lights, and uh, there were four of us, so we would sit at the bottom of the sea with our backs next to each other, and these dugongs would circle us, and they were, uh, wouldn't come close enough for us to get a proper shot of these animals. But they would look vaguely human, the way they moved. And they would get closer and closer, and we knew our air was running out. And uh, we thought, well, we should be going out now, but no, they're coming so much closer, maybe we'll stay on a little bit. So we got the impression that these mermaids were trying to drown us. And uh, we never actually got the right footage of them, but it was a fantastic experience diving at night with no lights under a full moon. That's why. And uh, no knowing that you love ocean yourself, like, would. We'll, we'll would you be like a water, more water person? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I am a tropical water person. I love it. And I spend a lot of my time underwater as well as I love, like you, you like surfing. I'm a pathetic boogie boarder. <laughs> and nowadays, my only cardiovascular is thinking I'm drowning three times a year in frontier with my boogie board. <laughs> <laughs> but I do do a lot of diving. These are what my expeditions are. I take people to these remote places now on private expeditions. Yeah, so that, that will be, uh, we have uh, questions to probably close as well. Do you have any other questions? Uh, but probably just in relation to what you're doing Yeah, now. what are you doing yeah. now? Like if, uh, you know, some people want to get connected to you and also, you know, keep supporting you as uh, for all the beautiful things that you've been, you know, doing all your life. What, what are you doing now? What can you offer everyone who's going to be uh, watching well, this Well, unfortunately, video? I probably can't offer you that much because I'm an electronic cyber dunce. I haven't discovered how to harness this technology because um, um, this is why I rely occasionally on being filmed by people like yourselves. Uh, but I do lead expeditions. I do have a website which you can probably explain to them. Um, I'll put links on for, for everything. For absolutely. Thank you. I don't know if you know my website already. But it, do you know? DrLawrenceBlair.com. That's all it is. DrLawrenceBlair.com. Okay. And um, I give lectures, for instance, I lecture on the big ships, they have me on these cruise ships, which means there's like four or five hundred people in front of me, so I can tell them about the wonders, the wonders of being alive, but I do it through the lens, the excuse, the metaphor of my experiences in Indonesia. And I take people on private exploratory expeditions, 
to find certain things you can only find. It's always fun if you've got a goal of some form, if you've got a sort of a, it's a quest. And um, for instance, the, the, the birds of paradise can be found. Uh, they're difficult to find, but there are certain islands where if you compare properly, you can see these things. And they are like gems in the forest, which are completely different from any other bird. They're an aberration in the natural kingdom. They've evolved all this fashion which is far in excess of the basic needs to simply procreate. So it's these extremes of nature that interest me. And um, the, the next expedition that you're running very soon is about um, diving with whale sharks, is that correct? Yes. And so, for example, if anyone wanted to jump on that expedition with you, you do that like a few times a year? Oh, yeah, not so easy. They're booked up a year, in, well, I mean, we, we work on them for a year in advance. Okay. And uh, they should be booked up three months before the expedition okay. begins, which is exactly what these, this is. This is booked up already. Um, but yes, they've just recently discovered a new group of whale sharks off the west coast of Papua, West Papua, Indonesia, New Guinea, which is a very interesting place anywhere to go diving. There's all sorts of fascinating stuff there. It is where birds of paradise are found inland. It's where you have these big black kangaroos or you have tree kangaroos of species which you're still discovering there. And you have blue bioluminescent fungus, which I think I told you about, which lights up your camp at night in a very strange way. A little like I Avatar. Was, I was going to say like, like Avatar. Avatar. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. Like, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And I wanted also to say something for anyone that will be interested, you know, to get in touch with Lawrence to either lecture or make videos. Lawrence speaks English. Il parle très bien et couramment français aussi. Oui, j'espère. Après cinq ans au lycée franco-mexicain au Mexique. Voilà. Et avec un... Et puis je parle espagnol, bien sûr. Un merveilleux accent en français, comme on peut l'entendre. Et l'espagnol aussi, à la base. Oui, bien, parce qu'il a vécu aussi cinq ans en Mexique. Non, non, beaucoup plus. Beaucoup plus. Oui, oui, oui. 20 ans en Mexique. Bon, la famille a 20 ans en Mexique. Ah, 20 ans. Oui. Et aussi, le dernier idioma de la Islande de aquí, Indonesia. Indonesian. Yeah. And you also speak fluent Indonesian. Yeah, we couldn't have done this work if we didn't speak Indonesian. Then. They yeah. only speak English in these centers. Of, and in the old days, not many people spoke English here in Bali either. Yeah, that was one of the things we, you know, we really deeply looked at. So you, you're, you love speaking languages and that learning a language when you do it with your heart yeah. comes easily. Yeah, and you need to speak a person's language if you're to. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yeah. Well, that's a tall order. And remember, I'm, uh, I'm, I date from the 60s. I'm really a hippie, which is when we were all talking about this in literature and music and poetry, about the ending of the world as we know it, and the need to get back to nature itself and not to strip it all away. Uh, so I am here with my mouth hanging open 40 years later, watching the degree to which it is getting stripped and to which it is now suddenly rather significant that every single one of us understands that we as individuals can in fact affect the whole picture. I mean, even as simply, I mean, the simplest thing we can do is to just eat less meat. It sounds a boring thing to say, but I mean, that's the first thing, isn't it? Even to drink less milk, once we know how many acres of forest get stripped just so moo cows can provide steaks for us. Mm. And especially as now we know there are so many other wonderful things to eat. We've learned from all these other cultures, all the other delicious things there are to eat. But all, all I can say is this is a very exciting time. And when we complain of how awful it is, this, I got this from my professor in the past. He, he had a wonderful line. He says, if you don't like the way things are, just remember we are early in history. We're all a bunch of savages. We have barely begun our journey. So just keep your heart clean and your eyes open. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, it is a honor and a pleasure good, good, good. to have you with us. We really yeah. feel immensely uh, privileged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.